Hiya. Hello. Welcome to the Geeky Girls Knit Podcast. I'm Cece, also known as Java Pearl. I'm Dammy, also known as Dammy's Doodles. And we're glad to have you today. Today is Wednesday, the 14th of September, 2016, and this is episode 209. Yes. Um, we'd like to say a big welcome back. Sorry, my nose is itching. Welcome back. We love you guys. To all our returning viewers, and a big hi to any new viewers. Thanks for giving us a shot. We hope you enjoy the show. Dammy, we have a few people who joined the RAV group and introduced themselves this week. Why don't you give them a shout out? Okay. Stephanie, who is Fluffy Steph from Virginia. Tabitha, who is Tabby S80 from Kentucky. Naomi, who is Cozy Cute Knits from Northern Ireland. Penelope, who is Miss Red Pin from Victoria, Australia. And Mirjam, who is Miri Yummy from Israel. Welcome. We're so glad to have you guys. Thanks for introducing yourselves. Um, Dammy, if somebody is not a member of the Ravelry group, what should they do and why? You should join and introduce yourself be in our introduction thread because you'll get a shout out on our next episode and you will be able to participate in all our cows and giveaways. That's right. And we have some giveaways today. We have an uh, a review of an amazing new book by some of our favorite designers. And yeah, lots of stuff to talk about, so we probably should get started. Here we go. And now we're going to talk about what's on our needles. So what is on your needles? I am working on Christmas presents. They are the Bluebird of Happiness by Sarah Elizabeth Kellner. So I have an almost finished one here. It's on US 4, 3.5 millimeters, and the yarn is West Yorkshire Spinner's Signature 4 Ply in the Wood Pigeon colorway. I was just trying to get you to hold it up a little higher because it was cutting the bottom off. Cute. And now that you've, you're have you almost done with one, I bet it'll go faster because you've, like, you know what I mean? Because you've knit the whole pattern and so you kind of know what's coming next. Very cool. Uh, do you have other stuff on your needles? Yes, I am almost finished with your Battlestar Galactica inspired pattern on US 1.5, 2.5 millimeters on Third Vault Yarns Librarian Sock in a Secret Colorway. Yes, and those kits go up for pre-order on Sunday. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you more about it in Yummies. So, All right, anything else? No. All right. So what's on your needles? Well, first up is my zigzag blanket, which is the 10 Stitch Zigzag Pattern by Frankie Brown. It's on US 4, 3.5 mil needles. I finished the Mint Rain Yarns Zombie Love Colorway Stripe, and I have cast on very colorful yarnings. It was from the uh, something about peacocks, peacocks revenge, something like that. It was from the Golden Skein, and I knit socks from it last October for Halloween. Um, because even though it wasn't a Halloween colorway, it reminded me of one because it was it's the orange and blacks, and the black is kind of speckled. Um, so I've just started that on. Um, on my blanket and I am now like what it was it 30% done I'm 30% done with the blanket I have like 56 more stripes of 20 zigzags each still shooting for 2019 for the for the finish we'll see and then next up I have my epic haven poncho the haven poncho is a pattern by Holly Yo I'm on US 8's 5 mil needles and I've made a good amount of progress this week let's see sorry I'm getting tangled in the yarn so the uh, the bottom one is I'm trying to find it. It's there some oh there it is Rainbow Heirloom Solo Light in the Hidden Reef colorway, and then the next one up is Sidegart in the Butterfly colorway, and then the next one up is Malabrigo Yarn Sock in the Light of Love colorway. And then the next one right here is um, Yarn Pony Show Pony 4-ply in the Rosa colorway. And I've just started with this gorgeous blue. It's hard to tell because I'm holding it still with the Yarn Pony. Uh, this is Eden Cottage Yarns Titus 4-ply in the Nighttime Cityscape colorway. And when I finish this section where I'm holding um, a, a strand of the Rosa and the uh, nighttime cityscape together, I will be 50% done. Um, I will have knit 400 grams of yarn 
in this project. So I'm making good progress on it and I will show you in yummies because I bought buttons for it. So um, I will show you that when we get to yummies. And then the other thing I have my needle on my needles, I've literally just cast this on. These are birthday socks for my friend Katie whose birthday is in the end of October. Um, I'm using my French vanilla cappuccino sock pattern and I'm on US 1.5, 2.5 mil needles and the yarn is Zweiger Garn Opal Sweet and Spicy in the Chili colorway. Let's see if I can turn this so you can see how it's supposed to knit up. The label's like folding weird. I don't know if you can see that. So literally I have just, just, just cast on. So um, yeah, so I will work on these. And um, I do magic loop for the toe only and then I switch over to the nine inch circulars, which are my go-to sock knitting needles. And that's everything that's on the needles, because I have some of those. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about those. And now we're going to talk about her finished projects. That's right. So first up is my weekly preemie hat. This is number 37 for the year. And this is from my free top-down preemie hat pattern on Ravelry. I use US 6s, 4 mil needles, and the yarn is... Um, Ginger's Hand Dyed Splendor DK in the Liquid Sunshine colorway. West Yorkshire Spinner's Air Valley Erin in the Light Brown colorway, and I used up the rest of that yarn. And then on top is a pom-pom made from my first spinning project, because I didn't have enough of the light brown <laughs> to make it. And I'm, this is not showing you very good the yellow. The yellow is super bright, and it's, it's just washing it out. It's like really, really bright. Um, I have enough of it left to do maybe like the stripe on a hat. So um, that's number 37 for the year. And then I just finished, just before we started recording, Dami's birthday socks, which is another pair of socks from my French Vanilla Cappuccino sock pattern. And I used US one and a half, 2.5 mil needles, and the yarn is like West Yorkshire Spinner, Spinner's Signature 4 Ply Cocktail Collection in the Passion Fruit Cooler colorway. I have not even woven in the ends. Like these literally just came off my needles like five minutes before we started recording. So I need to weave in those ends and block them. And I did not try to make them line up the color stripes, but they line up almost perfectly. They're just like about a row off. But that doesn't bother you, does it? No. See, I didn't think so. So yeah, those are done. I have not even weighed the yarn to see how to see how much yarn I used. So, and there should be enough left to do a stripe in my zigzag blanket. Yep. And then that is everything I finished this week. So let's move on to some yummies. And now it's time for our favorite part of the show. Yummies. What are yummies, Dammy? Yummies are our current favorite things, things we like, things we want to talk to you about. Yummies. And I got a parcel in the post this week from the lovely Zena of the Little Yellow Uke podcast and the Little Yellow Uke Crafts yarn shop. She dyes her own yarn. Little, little Yellow Uke Creates. I think that's what it is. I thought it was Crafts. I thought it was Creates. I don't know. It's Little Yellow Uke, I can tell you that much. But she dyed a very special colorway of and yarn. very soft. Oh gosh, the yarn's so soft. But it's a, it's a very special colorway for our upcoming book. Mm -hmm. So we can't show that to you yet. But I can show you the card she sent because, oh my gosh, it's so freaking amazing. Caution contains sharp points. How cute is this pink sheep? <gasps> is this not perfect for Cece? Um, I'm going to show you the company because I'm sure somebody's going to ask otherwise. Vanessa B Designs Limited. Vanessa B Designs.co.uk. So maybe it contains you can... sharp points. It does. It does contain sharp points because see, right there. What, do, what is FSC? I have that no like idea. Rainforest Alliance? I have of? no idea. Is it made from sustainable paper? 
It's made paper from responsible sources. Oh. But thank you, Zena, for my adorable sheepy card. It will be going onto the wall of loveliness soon. Um, we got a parcel from Sarah, who is Little Angel SG2 on Ravelry. She sent us Matt Smith from Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, which I still have not read. It's sitting over there. Maybe I'll take it on the trip, my trip next week. How romantic. Yeah. Well, Mr. Collins does get married. I mean, there that might be a little bit of romance. And Darcy. <laughs> yes, Matt Smith. But what she was sending is some prizes for the autumnal cow, which we will show you when we get to the autumnal cow because we have several new prizes for the autumnal cow. But she sent for Dammy and I, well, she sent a keychain with a little sheepy on it and beads. And Dammy's going to put that on her keychain. And then she sent two stitch markers. And this is Dammy's. It's a little fairy with the moon sitting on the moon. It's perfect because Finding Neverland is my new thing. Oh, yeah, that is perfect. And then mine is says love with a heart. But the I love these type of stitch markers that have the lever back because they're actually earrings. But um, I love these type of stitch markers. So thank you so much to Sarah for the prizes and the goodies. I'm going to be a pirate. Okay. Can you get it in? Yeah. Keep talking, because then it's just weird. But I just want to see. If... Right, there you go. Yo ho ho and a bottle of rum. There you go. Um, I received a pattern this week from the designer, who is Naomi, who is Cozy Cute Knits on Ravelry. She designed the beautiful warrior cowl, which is which I'm putting on the screen right now. And I'm just going to read you a little bit from the pattern page. This pattern features a delicate butterfly lace stitch and is inspired by the sufferers of fibromyalgia. The butterfly symbol that is both delicate yet strong, much like those who suffer from this chronic debilitating condition. Proceeds from the sale of this pattern will go to Fibro Fibromyalgia Awareness Northern Ireland, a charity that supports, educates, and advocates to and on behalf of fibromyalgia sufferers in Northern Ireland and beyond. So she designed this beautiful cowl with a butterfly stitch um, to, to support people with fibromyalgia. And this was especially apropos after last week's question, Ask the Geeky Girls question, which was about fibromyalgia. And Naomi actually, in last week's episode thread, wrote a really nice um, response about how she deals with, with crafting with fibromyalgia. So if you did not see that, check that out. And thank you so much, Naomi, for um, sending that pattern my way. Um, I went to our um, favorite local yarn shop this week, Ginger Twist Studio, because I hadn't been in in a while because I had surgery and was recovering. But Jess had so kindly been holding a copy of Pom Pom Quarterly for me, the autumn color. Oh, there's a flower. It's pink. It is pink. Um, this is the natural dyes issue. Mm. I have not had a chance to look through the entire thing yet. I mean, I just kind of dyed natural causes. Yeah. I'm in love with this by Bristol Ivy. Florence. I, when I first saw it, I was like, what is it? Is it like a cloak or a shawl or a stole or a wrap? It's Cause, a wrap. Because... It, it's a pretty picture, but it doesn't really like show what it is. Well, let's see if it shows better, better back here. 78. I'm trying to get to the page. Just hold that thought. Oh, so it's like a stole. Oh, yeah. Here's a look at that image of it. And my other favorite, which you probably would never have guessed, but it has pockets. This is the Serafine by Camille Rosell. Look at those pockets. I had a favorite in here. I can't remember. Hold on just a second. I want to see what weight yarn this is done in. DK. No, Aaron Heavy Worsted. Oh. So that would knit up pretty quick. What was your favorite? Um, we're, we're really going to review it next week. We did not, we're not reviewing it today because we are reviewing another amazing book that is coming out today if you're watching this episode when it goes live. I can't 
can't remember which one was my favorite. Oh, maybe it was this one, the first one. Tessaly. Who's it by? I don't know. Hannah. Fetig? Massajuska. No. Massajuska. So, anyway. And there's a really good recipe in here for soup, but you. It, autumn beetroot soup, but it involves Greek yogurt. Or coconut yogurt. Greek yogurt is really good. Well, so we'll review this this as a we'll review the entire um, issue next week when we after we both have had a chance to go through the whole thing and everything. So pick that up, and then I told y'all I would show you the um, buttons I got for my. See, now I can't decide which side I want out. The other one, I think. This I one? think this side is supposed to be out because it's more. And it's it's rounded. slightly more rounded than the other one. Or Isn't that pretty? Maybe. I don't know. Now ah, I just dropped it. I don't know where it went. I don't know. It went straight down. I don't know where it went. <laughs> I lost my button. Here, have this one. Well, we got to find the other one because I bought exactly eight. So, those will go on my haven. We'll find it when we stop recording. Yeah, so... Yeah, and I picked up some yarn, some Patreon yarn. No yarn for me. I'm trying to knit f up some of my stash up here. What if you knit up all of your stash and then you had no more stash? I would have to buy a lot of yarn. Um, okay, so I wanted to tell you that the So Say We All Battlestar Galactica sock kit, inspired sock kit, is going on a pre-order this Sunday which is the 18th of September, and it will be at 3 p.m. BST, which is 7 a.m. Pacific, 8 a.m. Mountain, 9 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. GMT. This kit is a collaboration between me, so you'll get a sock pattern designed by me and knit by Dami. She's working on it right now. Um, yarn from Lola of Third Vault Yarn yarns and it's beautiful yarn and a project bag from Sam of Knit Run Dig and I just saw the zipper pools yesterday and they are fabulous oh my gosh and then there will also be some goodies inside so the cost of the kit is $62 US plus shipping and as I said the pre-orders will start this Sunday the 18th of September at 3 p.m. BST and the ship date will be no later than Thursday, the 20th of October. Mm -hmm. So set your alarms for that so that you don't miss out because it is a limited number of kits. And I want you to get it if you're interested in it. All right. Do we have anything else other than our normal stuff? I don't think so. I needed to get a sip of water. That was a lot of talking. So let's talk about hashtag GGK Crafty Pad. What is this, Dammy? It stands for Geeky Girls Night Crafty Photo A Day Challenge. We have a list of prompts for each month, so you take a look at the prompt for that day, take a picture related to it, and post it anywhere you like, but we pick our favorites from Instagram. I was trying to find the missing button, but I didn't find it. So September is like back to school, autumn is coming. Autumn is here. Autumn is here. What was the first day of autumn? Twenty. Well, it feels like autumn is here. Here, the first day is I think the twenty second. Okay. Except for we're supposed to have warm weather tomorrow, and then it's supposed to get back to autumn. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. So we are going to show you something. Yes, two photos from us that we liked, and five photos from other people that we liked. So here come the photos.
just in case you were worried, damn, we found the button. We are safe. Whew. There's eight in there. This was not the first time that I dropped all the buttons out of this, though. I had put it in my bag at just a shop, and then I was trying to get to my water bottle, which was underneath, and the bag of because it's in a paper. The buttons are in a paper, small paper bag, like with the top folded down. It went flying out of the bag, and buttons went everywhere. Where were you? I was sitting in the chair over by her chair. Oh, I I didn't hear you say you were still in just a shop. I thought you were like outside. No, I was in just a shop and like seven of the buttons landed on the floor and one went inside my bullet journal. Oh. But luckily I saw it and it was saved. We're okay. So those were our favorite photos. Great job, everybody. It is never too late to participate to join in. Just take a look at the prompt for the day. Today's prompt, I believe, is 3 p.m., 3 o'clock. Well, I guess you could do 3 a.m. if you were awake, but I wasn't. 3 o'clock, I have an alarm set to remind me so I don't forget because otherwise I'll be just like, oh, it's 5 o'clock and I forgot. So, you take a look at the prompt, take a photo related to it, you interpret it any way that you would like. We are so flexible on this one. You post it on Instagram. Make sure you use the hashtag GGKCraftyPad in your caption because that's how we find your photos and yours might get chosen. And we'll have the October list coming up. I don't think next week. I think it'll be the week after. But you're going to work on that right while, we're, while I'm gone. Mm -hmm. We'll tell you more about that at the end of the podcast. All right, let's talk about upcoming events we'll be attending. Do you want to start? Yes, we will be vending at the Yarn Emporium in London with Sam of Knit Run Dig Project Bags and Lola of Third Vault Yarns on Saturday the 5th and Sunday the 6th of November. That is right. That is right. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and then um, we advocate that you take a long holiday. You do Yarn Porium. You do some sightseeing in and around London. And then you come to Farnham, which is 50 miles southwest of London, for the Geeky Pup and Knit Palooza, which is a knitting retreat that you and I co-host with our friend Sam of Knit Run Dig. And this is going to be um, on Thursday the 10th of November through Sunday the 13th of November. Um, we still have some spaces available if you want to attend the entire retreat. We still have some spaces available if you can't attend the entire retreat but want to take a class or more than, or three classes, because that's as many as you could take because there's three sessions. Um, the vendor market is open to the public in the afternoon of the 12th of November, which is a Saturday from 1.30 to 5. It's a three pound entry fee or a donation of a knit or, knit or crochet item for charity. Stay tuned because we are going to have news about a premium way that you can get into the vendor market early, even if you're not attending the entire retreat. So stay tuned for that news in the next week or two. We are looking for, I can't, I, I can't make my, <laughs> my pinkies. Do you see like it, when I try to make it go up, my pinky wants to come up too? Four. The fourth thing I'm going to say, or I could be like fringe and be like, six, I have six fingers. Okay, it needs to be like this. Six fingers. Ah, the glyphs, you know. Fourth, the fourth thing is we are looking for door prize and goodie bag donations. If you have a fiber related business, whether you are a yarn dyer, a fiber dyer, um, a knitwear designer, a bag maker, um, stitch marker maker, uh, notions, of whatever, whatever, anything in the fiber related world. Um, if you would like to donate a door prize or if you'd like to donate something like a coupon code or a, a small sample, a mini skein to put into our goodie bags for our attendees, we are looking for businesses to do that right now. So if you're interested in doing that, you can email us at geekypuffinknitpalooza at gmail.com or PM me Java Pro and Ravelry and then to sign up or find out more information on everything else I said you can go to geekypuffinknitpalooza.com that's right all right I think that is everything for events at this point so let's move on to the next segment <laughs> And 
And now we're going to talk about what we're reading and watching. So what are you reading, Jeremy? I am still reading Peter Pan by J.M. Barry. Or yeah. The Boy Who Wouldn't Grow Up. Yeah. Is that like the subtitle of it? Yes. Okay. It's like Frankenstein or The Modern Prometheus. I don't know that I knew that that was the subtitle of that book. It is. Okay. Well, uh, is there anything you want to tell us about it? No. Most of my focus right now is on the SAT, so... You're, yeah. not, you're not getting a lot of reading done. Yeah. So, if you are the praying kind, Dammy's going to be taking the SAT in two and a half weeks on Saturday, the 1st of October. And she would definitely appreciate your prayers that morning. Or, or the night before. Or, or, or now. Or kind thoughts. Yeah. Or anything positive. Good vibes. Good wishes. Positive vibes. Especially jazz on, hands. Especially on the math section. Yeah. Jazz hands. Would you take some jazz hands? Sure. Jazz hands. Sure. Just a bunch of people lined up outside the testing center doing jazz hands. I will be there if you would like me to be. No, it'll okay. be really early. You probably wouldn't want to be up that early. I could give you jazz hands from afar. I can like FaceTime you or Voxer you with a video of I'm jazz hands. I'm not allowed to use my phone in But this. before you go in. But what if the bus is late and the doors are about to close and I have to like get in there really quickly? I don't know. I'm just trying to give you some jazz hands. Um, okay. Okay. I thought I dropped a stitch, but I did not. So okay. what are you reading? Well, I have finished a bunch of things this week, book-wise. I finished reading Coming Back to God When You Feel Empty, Whispers of Restoration from the Book of Ruth by Tanya Marlowe, uh, which was, was a pretty good book. I finished reading probably my favorite book this year so far, maybe even in the last two or three years. Present Over Perfect, Leaving Behind Frantic for a Simpler, More Soulful Way of Living by Shauna Nyquist. Highly recommend it. I've gifted the book to two of my friends already because it is so amazing. And I did not want it to end. I was like drawing out the last like three or so essays because I was just like, I don't want it to end. So I'm probably going to have to read it again just because it was so powerful for me. And so then I have now started a new nonfiction book called The Fringe Hours, not related to the TV show Fringe or to Fringe Science at all. Making Time for You by Jessica N. Turner. And this is about um, moms taking time for themselves in those fringe hours. Do I make a lot of chaos for you in the, in the waking hours? Not so much anymore. <laughs> a little bit sometimes. But not so much anymore. But still, I had heard really good things about the book and I got it on a really, really good sale price and a friend has been reading it and highly recommended it so I was like okay I will read it and then fiction wise which you know I don't really ever tell you about everything I've read because some of it is not great but I read a couple of books this week that were pretty good the first one is by Denise Grover Swank and it's the first book in the Magnolia Steel mystery series called Center Stage and the um, second book just came out this week. Um, she left it with a pretty big cliffhanger. So I was like, okay. Um, so I, I really like her writing. And so I was, it's different than other stuff she's written, in my opinion. But um, it was pretty good. And then another one of my favorite authors, Gail Carriger. Um, I was able to get the first book in her, The Custard Protocol series. And this book is called Prudence. Is it like, is it General Custard or Colonel Custard? No, that's Colonel Mustard mm -hmm. from Clue. <laughs> In the observatory with the knitting needle. That's not one of the weapons. In the craft room with the knitting needle. That's not one of the rooms or the weapons. With the circular needle. That's With the, the cord no, of the circular you're, needle. You're making things up. You're making things up. Yes. Um, so it was pretty good. Um, so I think the last thing I read by her was a YA series, and this is, in my opinion, it's like a higher YA series, like age-wise. Hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready for this. I'm going to tell you about this book, and I'm going to tell you now, 
I'm going to totally spoil the book for you. So if you think you might have any interest in reading this book at all, I'll tell you what it is and everything first. But then I'm going to totally spoil it because it really kind of irked me. A lot. <laughs> I told the hubs and dammy about this the other day. I was like, seriously? So the name of this book is Interference by Amelie. Amelie Antoine, who's a French writer. So this was translated from French into English. And it was on the um, Kindle Unlimited program. And it had... That's a red flag already. No, it had pretty high <laughs> ratings. I mean, lots of people had read it and it had... I mean, it was like... It was like a like an either an upper three or a four starish rating out of five, so I mean I was like okay, and the the like teaser text of it was about this the the guy his wife dies unexpectedly, and how he copes in the first year of losing her. Now here comes the totally spoiling everything. <laughs> So if you don't want to hear, you need to fast forward because I'm just going to spoil it. I'm totally going to spoil it. And I don't recommend reading the book because it really just irked me a lot. So here's what happened. So you're reading along. The wife died. She drowned in, in um, the ocean. She was, a, she was a very good swimmer. She was very athletic. But apparently she had a, I believe it was a, an aneurysm in her brain. And she drowned because... So they had only been married like three years or something. And so, um, you know, it's this thing of how he's coping and how he's going to deal with losing his young wife. And um, then he meets this lady who is a photographer and ends up working with the grief support group that he's in to like help those who are interested, like make a photo album of special things to remember the life of their loved one who they lost. So this whole story is going along. And then you get to the like halfway point of the book and it's like all heck breaks loose. And you're like, what the crap? She's not dead. She faked her death for a reality TV show. Yeah, seriously. But that's not all. So, this other woman that he met in the grief support group, she's also a reality TV show contestant. And it's between the wife and this new lady, the photographer lady. And if, if the photographer lady can get the guy to fall in love with her, she gets half a million francs. I, I don't know, something. A substantial amount of money. Oh, France used her. Oh, maybe it was euros. Okay, euros. Whatever it was. I'm sorry. Um, so she had to get him to propose to her. That was like the thing. Or if that didn't happen, the wife got the money. So all this is going on. And so then he like, he like is so angry and all this stuff and everything. And then he tries to like pull it together and tries to make it work with his wife. And then you get to the end of the book. And he murders her. Makes it look like a drowning. Because he's so angry with her. That was the book. But it was like a train wreck. You couldn't look away. I was like, I can't stop. I have to know what in the world happened. Because this is so bizarre. Who would think of this? And then also at the end. The photographer lady who was the reality TV contestant. Meets this guy on a, I believe it was on a plane. And he's another re reality TV contestant. And now there's something going with this new guy and the photographer lady. And it's another reality TV show. <laughs> Very interesting. So I do not recommend Interference by... Emily. Emily Antoine at all. If I could give it a zero star, I would, but I can't. So it got a one star. It really, really irked me. Really a lot. And that's everything I've read this week that I wanted to talk about. And really, I wouldn't have talked about a book that I didn't like, but it was just so much that I had to tell you. This is kind of like my Once Upon a Time rants. Mm -hmm. And now I need water because I've ranted so much. Okay. Okay.
we should talk about TV. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, do you want to start? Sure, we are re-watching season one of Fringe. We're almost to the end, I think. We are almost to the end. Um, we met the little boy. Mm -hmm. The mysterious child. Yeah, we, that's, we, that was one of the episodes we watched last night. And all the foreshadowing. Because, you know, we've all seen this before. But, I mean, it's been so long ago that there's some stuff that I just don't remember. But there's other stuff that I'm like, oh, wait, wait, wait. I know what's coming with this one. But there was a holy foreshadowing Batman in this episode, last episode that we watched. Yeah. You have anything you want to say about Fringe? No. Okay. And then we're rewatching season two of Gilmore Girls. Mm hmm Was the last episode we watched about Luke's uncle dying? Yes. Okay. And Rory is forcing Jess to work in the diner. Yes. And Lorelai with her diner speak. Diner speak. And... <laughs> Um, about the reenactors not wanting to, to come to his uncle's funeral mm -hmm. and the uncle, he, he ends up having to have an extra long casket because he wanted to take everything with him. But yeah, we're getting to this whole Jess Rory thing. Is it just about to happen? And you know, I'm... Hashtag Team Jess once he gets his act together, but he doesn't have his act together yet. Oh, but we did see some new photos this week from Gilmore Girls. Oh, I just saw that one. I saw some other ones yesterday. Well, and some better quality ones. And in one of them, Luke and Lorelai were holding hands. <laughs> Is it November yet? Almost. Because Two more months. We have a Gilmore Girls of Palooza planned. We we have a very long list of food. On it includes various things like mucho mac and cheese, uh, candy of all kinds, coffee, coffee cake, um, burgers, pizza, Chinese food. Yeah. Not Indian food, or you'd have to burn down the house later. Pop tart. Pop tarts, yes, pop tarts. Pop tarts, I love pop tarts. They don't have pop tarts over here. Well, they do have pop tarts, but not the generic kind. So you'd have to get like an expensive box of pop tarts. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then we can all hold hands and skip afterwards. Yes, we can. All right, we are rewatching season. My, the hubs and I are rewatching season four of Numbers. I think we only have one episode left in season four. So we are making our way through that. I think, oh, what's the lady's name? Not Amita. Megan. Megan. I think, I think her character's about to leave the show. I, can't, I, I know she leaves the show at some point, but I can't remember oh, when. I didn't know she left the show. Yeah. So that may be coming up soon. Um, okay, you're next. Um, we're watching season two of Dark Matter. Many things happened. Well, remember we watched two episodes. Yeah, many things happened. The the guy took back over his mm -hmm. the country and killed everybody. Planet. The planet. Planet. And, Whole and, planet. And killed everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Crazy. I was like, what? I knew. I thought he would probably kill somebody, but kill some of them. But I didn't think it was gonna be like everybody in the room. He needs to take a deep breath. Yeah. Yeah. And then we finished watching Brain Dead. Mm -hmm. Previously on Brain Dead. Da, 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 da. And so they saved the the world by yeah. killing the cherry blossoms and the bug. And the bug. The mm -hmm. end. The end. I, I don't think that there's going to be another season of it. Oh. I mean, there might be, but I'm like, where are they going to go from here? Wall Street. Something. Because that's where he got a job. That's true. That's true. The music was fabulous in that. We really enjoyed all that music. So, all right. Well, we have um, quite a few cows to talk about. Mm -hmm. So, we should move on to the next segment. And now we're going to talk about our September, October, November artistic autumnal cow. Yes, because we like alliteration a lot. 
absolutely amazing. Awesome. <laughs> Alrighty then. This started the 1st of September and runs through the 30th of November. It's for any project you knit, crochet, weave, or spin that you can convince us is related to autumn. And we're pretty cheer friendly on that. If you can give us a reason, we most likely will take it. I like autumn. I like autumn too. No whips are allowed. You have to start your project September 1st or later or finish it by the end, or not or, and finish it by the 30th of November. Unless. Yes, the only exception to that is if you are knitting my Where You Lead, I Will Follow Gilmore Girls inspired socks, if you started those in August for the Gilmore Girls cow, as long as you finish them by the end of September, you can post them in the Artistic Autumnal cow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, feel free to poly dip in other cows as long as it meets the rules. Um, I'm not going to, we're not going to talk about all the prizes this week, but we have a few new ones, so we're going to tell you about those. First up, well, actually, we have two prizes from Sarah, who is Little Angel SG2. So this is a leaf um, stitch marker set. So there's four markers and one clasp one. They're really cute. I like them a lot. And then we have a Halloween stitch marker set, which has a pumpkin, an apple, and a witch. Uh, the witch is not behaving. There she is. So we have I those. I thought your ring was part of the stitch marker sets. It is. Oh, here you go. Here's a whole 30 update. I had to get a spacer on my ring because it's about to fall off. But they didn't recommend resizing it until they, I was sure that I had lost all the weight I'm going to lose. So. Um, and then from Amber, who is a devious angel, we have two Baker's Dozen mini skein sets. That's on the screen right now. Okay. So there's two sets of 13. So there'll be two winners. And then from Betsy, who is Quill Pin, we have a pattern of the winner's choice from her Ravelry store. Mm -hmm. And she has just a couple of patterns up right now, but she's got a couple more coming out before the end of the cow. So, and then we have lots of other prizes. Here they all are on the screen. If you wanna know more about them, you can go to the show notes, geekygirlsknit.com, and see all about them, or tune in to the first podcast of every month where we talk about them in detail. Every project you finish and post in the FO thread counts as one entry into the giveaways. You must be a member of the Geeky Girls Knit Ravelry group, podcast group on Ravelry to participate. Um, you have to post your picture in the FO thread. The hashtag is ggkautumnal16. We'll lock the thread the morning of the 1st of December and draw winners on the next podcast after that. Uh, you'll, if you are a winner, you have 30 days to claim your prize or you forfeit it. There is a chatter thread in our Ravelry group. And damn it, we have some people who finished some stuff this week. Why don't you give them a shout out? Okay. A1 Darwin times 2, Crazy Knitting Fool, Crochet Chick 31, Fry Meister, Hazy Summers times 2, Knit for Many, Little Angel SG2 times 2, Mystery Sewer times 3, Pamela JD, Rue CMC, Tabby S80, The Baby Lady 1990 times 2, BT Kimmy Kim times 2, and Yarn Taxi Driver. Yay! Great job, everybody. So keep working on those art artistic autumnal projects and get them posted. All right, let's talk about the next cow. And now we're going to talk about our 52 weeks of charity cow. Yes, this started on the 1st of January and it runs through the 31st of December. It's for any project you knit, crochet, or weave that you, you are going to donate to charity. Um, so to be eligible for prizes in this though, you have to complete 52 items over the course of the year. And it doesn't necessarily have to be 50, uh, a project each week, but just 52 items total. And no whips are allowed. Um, you can poly dip in other cows, that's totally fine. So what you do is when you finish your first item, you start a post in the FO thread. And then for every subsequent item you finish, you edit that post until you get to 52 items in that post. Like and, Stash Dash. Yes. And then, unlike Stash Dash, you can start again and start a new post and do another 52. That's totally fine. Um, you can donate your finished projects to any charity you'd like. Um, we'll be no donating stuff to Knit for Peace and to Premies UK, so if you don't have some place to donate, uh, contact us and you can send it to us and we'll donate for you. You have to be a member of the Geeky Girls Knit 
podcast group on Ravelry to participate. The hashtag is GGK52WOC, Weeks of Charity, Cal16. GGK52WOC, Cal16. We'll lock the thread the morning of the 1st of January, 2017, and draw for prize winners the week after that. You'll have 30 days to claim your prize if you are a winner. There is a chatter thread. Um... So the prizes that we have so far, and at this point, everyone who has finished 52 projects is going to win a prize. We have some people that are coming up close, so then we'll do. So here are the prizes thus far. I donated a skein of West Yorkshire Spinner's Signature 4-ply in the Holly Berry colorway. And for every seven people that compete, complete 52 items, I will add another skein of West Yorkshire Spinner's yarn. Okay? We also have... A Bernay Coral Pom Pom and a Lion Brand Black Cat Pom Pom from Catherine, who is Tia and Cat. And then Mary, who is Jammin' to Knit, donated three single patterns from her Ravelry Pattern Store. So before we recorded today, I went through and did the maths to see how many finished projects we have. A lot. 691. With three and a half months to go. It would be really amazing if we got to a thousand. Yeah. I don't know if we will, but it would be really amazing. So if you're participating in this Cal, keep going. You can do it. Keep working on those projects. And I can't wait to see. It just warms my heart so much to see all the amazing things and all the, the multitude of different things, you know, that are is being donated to charity. So I just love it. So mwah, thank y'all for participating in that. And yeah, we have one more cow to talk about. And now we're going to talk about our Gilmore Girls cow. That's right. So we are co-hosting this cow with Jilly, who is vegan Jilly on Ravelry of the Knitting Broomstick podcast. It started on the 1st of August and it runs through the end of this month, the 30th of September. And it's for any project you knit, crochet, weave, or spin that you can convince us is related to Gilmore Girls. Mm -hmm. We're pretty flexible on that. So, um, no whips are allowed August 1st or later and finish by the 30th of, of September. Feel free to poly dip in other cows. That's totally fine. We have lots of lots of lovely prizes that we're putting on the screen right now. If you want to know about them more in detail, go to our show notes geekygirlsknit.com where there is a full list and links to the um, shops of, of places who donated stuff. So every project you post, you do one post, oh no, that doesn't, I'm not saying it right. You post each project in a separate post. Mm -hmm. And every post is one entry into the giveaway. You do get a bonus entry if you knit my Where You Lead I Will Follow Gilmore Girls Inspired Socks. And you'll, so you'll do a second post in the FO thread for that. And there's info about that in like one of the early posts in the thread. Um, you have to be a member of both groups. So the Geeky Girls Knit podcast group and the Knitting Broomstick podcast group on Ravelry to participate. Um, so the FO thread is in our group. And the chatter thread is in Jilly's group, the Knitting Broomstick group. So um, the hashtag is Gilmore GGK TKB, so that's Gilmore Geeky Girls Knit the Knitting Room Stick. We will lock the thread the morning of the 1st of October, and we'll draw winners on our next podcast. The winners will also be announced on Jilly's podcast, but you will have 30 days from the date that our podcast goes live to claim your prize or you forfeit it. Mm -hmm. Okay? And we have quite a few people who finished up this week, so why don't you give them a little shout out? Okay. Adventures in Dinner, Army Wife 2102, Auntie Knits a Lot, Beba Kriya, Cozy Cute Knits, Evely, Grey Frog, Muzzer Z, Mystery Sewer, Me Patrish, Rana Casement, Sergeant Griff's Girl, Silver Luna 2112 times 2, VT Kimmy Kim times 4, and Wela. Great job. So keep working on those Gilmore Girls projects, and you might be one of the winners. All right, we have a question to answer. Let's move on to the next segment. And now it's time for Ask the Geeky Girls, the part of our show where you ask us things and we answer them. That's right. Or so, try to. Yes, we, we do our best. So what is this week's question, Dammy? This week's question comes from Amber, who is Devious Angel from Florida. 
What has been the most challenging knitting project that you have tackled and what aspects of it made it a challenge? All right, so I've been told that I'm going first. So hold on just a second because I was in the middle of the sock row. So I am actually wearing my project. This piece of loveliness. Thanks. You're welcome. Is the Junction Shawl, which was a mystery knit along shawl that I did with the, des the designer is Lee Meredith, who is lethal on Ravelry. This was her 2012 mystery shawl. This was the first mystery project I had ever done. And in this project, I learned my now much loved shadow wrap methods of doing wrap and turns, mm -hmm. which you've knit. If you've knit one of my sock patterns, that is how the pattern's written is with shadow wraps. But um, this thing, it started, I can't even, I'm trying to remember how this thing worked. I think that it was first this wavy section right here. I think that's where we started. And then I think we picked up and did this middle section and then maybe the top and then worked down this way, maybe. It was multi-directional. And can you see my lovely sequin sparkles that are in there? Um, yeah, it was difficult. And it even says on the pattern page, this is difficult. But if you take it one step at a time and read it and follow it exactly, it will work. And so it was so much fun to do this. And even though I don't wear this very often, it is still one of my beloved projects that I really, really love. And I'm so grateful to Lethal for teaching us, teaching me how to do the shadow wrap short rows because it was a game changer in my design stuff to use the shadow wrap method because it's fabulous. And that is my Junction Lethal Mystery Shawl 2012, which is a really fun pattern. You should definitely try it out. Okay, what about you? Uh, this one, this scarf that I just finished recently, this is the Optical Delusion Conflagration by Kim McBrien Evans. And so, you said that you learned how to do shadow wraps there, and so I learned how to knit from you, so I learned how to do shadow wraps. But this scarf required you to use regular wrap and turns and not pick up the stitches, so I had to do that. And the stitch is all, this scarf is all garter stitch, as well as like casting on and binding off and wrap and turns. But for every row you have to count all the stitches and make sure they are all exactly right. Otherwise you have to like frog back to the beginning of the chart. Or put in a lifeline, which you learned how to do. Mm -hmm. And you have not blocked it yet because no. things have been crazy <laughs> around here. Yeah. It's lovely. And also the yarn ball wouldn't end and the the amount of yarn it said it needed for the final repeat of the chart was incorrect, so I could have used more yarn. Yeah. But. It's pretty. Yeah. You have anything else you want to say about it? No. Oh, you were gonna say something about the backward loop cast on. Oh, and I had to learn how to cast on in the middle of a row, so I learned how to do the backward loop cast on. Yep. Yep. I think, I think a lot of times our, I'm, I'm using the, the, the global R, not, R. not R, but the global R. Um, most challenging knitting projects tend to be the ones where we learn something new. Would y'all agree with that? So thank you so much, Amber, for this question. It was a really, really good one. Um, we'd love to hear in the Ravelry thread for this week's episode what your most challenging knitting project has been and what aspects of it made it a challenge. And would you agree with us that um, sometimes the um, most challenging is the one where you're learning new stuff? So... Let us know your thoughts on that. And if you have a question for us, what should they do? Go to our Ask the Geeky Girls thread in our Ravelry group and post it. I really hope you cannot hear the annoying 
mower people outside. We thought they were done yesterday. They were here almost all day yesterday, and now they're back. We closed all the windows, and so we're doing our best. Sorry. All right, well, we have a review to do, so we should move on to the next segment. And now we have a review and giveaways. That's right. So we are reviewing the brand new, oh, come on, Mad Color, which is the brand new book by Tim Can Knits, who is Alexa Ludman and Emily Wessel. And this is Bold and Playful Modern Knits. This is such a fun, fun, fun book. Um, so this book has 16 patterns in it. It is launching today, Thursday, the 15th of September. And we are so lucky to have an early release copy of it so we can review it for y'all. So some of the projects in this book are ones that they had previously released, mm -hmm. but there are quite a few new ones. And we're not gonna talk about all of them because there's a lot, but you'll be able to see all of them on Ravelry. But, or here's a picture of all of them. Um, so one of my favorite things about this book is they explore different things about color. So for example, this page talks about hue and the color wheel and things like that. This page talks about saturation and contrast. This page talks about different types of coloring and dye techniques in yarn. It, it is amazing. It is so, so informative about if you want to learn how to do fun things with different colors in your hand knits. Okay, so I don't know which projects you wanted to, which patterns. I'll, I'll Okay, so um, there is a project about making bunting out of swatches. There is a cute um, jumper called Spotlight. Let's see. That's really cute. Um, and as always, their stuff it has such a wide size range. For example, that sweater that I just showed you goes from zero to six months all the way to adult four extra large which is, they're so amazing. I love, 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 love that. Their charts are really easily read. Um, and, and everything, which is positive. There's a mitts pattern called triptych. We could talk about these patterns all day long because there's so many of them. Is this one you were going to talk about? No. no. Okay, so there's a hat pattern called prism that you can either do in triangles, stripes, or dots. So, oops, sorry, there we go. So there's quite a few of them. How fun is that? Um, so there's lots of fun different ways to, ch to play with color in that, um, to make it do what you want. And it's a good way to learn color work because mm -hmm. um, it's a pretty easy pattern to do color work. Um, so now we're going to jump into striping patterns. So they talk about like, um, doing ombre, doing garter stitch goodness. I thought it was ombre. Oh, I thought it was ombre. However you say it. This is one of my favorites. This is the burnished shawl. It is... Um, a combination of garter, stripes, and lace. It is a, a fingering weight project using three colors on US 6s, 4 mil needles, so that makes it a pretty quick knit. Um, so you do a striped garter for the body of it, and then you do a garter edge, and then you do a lace edge. And it's so beautiful. And I love this. I feel like you can see right there on the side. They show us different color options. Yeah. That you could like. I love that. That you could play with to put together for this shawl. We have the bounce blanket, which is one that has been, had been previously released. But there's another. Uh, let's see if it'll show. Do you see how they've shown us different color options for that? Um, there's another sweater called Chromatic. And it gets 
This is one of the ones you like? What do you like about this one? Uh, I, I don't know. It just looks nice. So it's a fingering weight on US 5, 3.75, and US 3, 3.25. Again, from baby all the way to 4XL adult. It's cute. I like it's got a wide neck on it, which I, I like. It's pretty. I really like that one. Yep, that's a nice one. Um, and then we have a scarf called a wash, which is pretty cool. Oh, I love the pages. And then they talk about blending yarns. Um, so there's a sweater called 1999. Like the year, not a price. There is the Marley blanket, which is done. Oh my gosh, this is insane! It's done in Aran bulky or super bulky weight yarn. But it's knit. Can you see this right here? It's knit from diagonal to diagonal. That's really cool. I don't know that I would ever knit it, but it's a really cool concept. There is the Undertone Cowl, which is another one of my favorites. I love the color combination thing again on the side. So this is done in DK weight. Um, on US 7's 4.5 mil needles. You can use two or more colors. And it's a really easy pattern to knit. Uh, and you can make it whatever length you would like. Um, okay, so I have knit the bumble hat pattern by them before, mm -hmm. but they have created a bumble sweater pattern. How cute is that? So that's another pattern in here. All right. Um, and then we come to color sliced and diced. So we have different things like color blocking, fair isle stripes, slip stitch marled blocking, uh, blocks of color, blending color. So we have the pot blanket in here, which is one that they had released before as well. We have the Winlock sweater, which is was previously in Pom Pom Quarterly, and I adore this. It's so beautiful. Oh, it's so pretty. It's done with a DK worsted weight on US 6's 4 mil and US 10's 6 mil. And it's so pretty. I love it, love it, love it a lot. Which I think is what I said when it was in, um, mm -hmm. in Pump and Quarterly. Okay, here's another one of my favorites, the Slice Shawl. Isn't that beautiful? So, and look at this, look at the direction of knitting that it does. Isn't that cool? So this is done in fingering weight, three colors, on US 5, 3.75 mil needles. So pretty. So it uses intarsia joins. And do they have a picture? Uh, okay. Right here. Oh, come on, show. They used a variegated color in with it, with t if within two solids. And I love how that one turned out. Oh, there's another really good picture of it. And then we have the polygon blanket. And then we get to the end. Uh, there's a short technique section. And then here is the whole Tin Can Knits family that joined in on the photo shoots. <laughs> so fun. And yeah. And that's the end of the book. Yep. I love it. It was such a good book. Yeah. There's there's several things in there. There's at least three things that I'm interested in knitting. We'll see how my typing goes. Because <laughs> you know how that goes. It's like, so we'd like to say a huge thank you to Alexa and Emily for um, sending that our way and best wishes to them on the release of their new book. All right, we have some prize winners to announce. The prizes are right here in this bag. First, we should say, if you entered into the summertime cow and did not watch last week's episode where we announced the winners, you might want to do that because we still have uh, quite a handful of prizes that have not been claimed. So... So this is our fourth Potiversary giveaway. I'm going to hand you all of these because this is the first prize. 
So we had a collection of five skeins of Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Bulky. So there's three in the Crush colorway, which is what you have, and then one each in the Wine and Wallaby colorway. And we used series, random number, uh, Ability. Ability, that's a good word, to draw the winner, and it is? Number 40, Girl in Knots. Congratulations, Girl in Knots. Um, I'll say at the end what to do if you're one of the winners. Here's the next prize. This is a fish project bag that was donated by Julia, who is Nimrus, and Dami, who is the winner of this? Um, number 81, Rue CMC. Congrats, Rue CMC. And then finally, we have a skein of Natalie Fergie yarn. It's 100 grams, 330 meters in the hug colorway. It's very squishy. Who is the winner of this one? Number 11, DG White. Congratulations, DG White. So, Girl in Knots, Rue CMC, and DG White, I need you to PM me Java Pearl on Ravelry with your full name and mailing address, and I will get this posted out to you. You'll have 30 days to claim your prize or you forfeit it. And thank you to everyone who celebrated our fourth pot anniversary with us. It was so fun to read through that thread of y'all's favorite moments and, and things. And it was really cool because a lot of times there was like overlapping favorite moments. Mm -hmm. Like, um, like I think especially we're going to have to do another Christmas karaoke episode this year because that was a favorite. So, and y'all like when we go to fun places which we have something coming up soon that will be a fun place to share with y'all some. Um, yeah. Okay, so make sure Girl in Knots, Rue CMC, and DG White that you contact me to claim your prize. And then just a reminder that we have um, a giveaway going for an ebook copy of the Filament Number no. 1 magazine. It's, uh, I already said it's an ebook copy. So to enter, you need to visit their Ravelry page and find your favorite pattern and then come tell us about it in the thread in the group. We'll keep that giveaway open until next week, episode 210, um, and draw for winner the winner then. And they are having a cowl in their group for the magazine. So you should go poly dip in their, in their group because you might be a prize winner. Uh, so, and thank you to them for donating a copy for us to give away. All right, let's move on to the next segment. Huzzah! We made it to the end of the show. Yay. Yay. Um, an announcement. Next week's podcast, episode 210, will be going live on Friday the 23rd of September instead of Thursday the 22nd of September. Do you want to know why? Why? They probably do. Because next Tuesday the 20th is the Hubs and My 19th wedding anniversary. 19 years we've been married. That's a long time. Um, and so we're going to go away for a little giveaway. Giveaway? A little getaway. Um, so this is a surprise trip. So the hubs knows we're going somewhere, but he doesn't know where we're going. Because I'm cool like that. So we won't record until Thursday the 22nd. So the episode will go live on Friday the 23rd. So just a heads up. Um, and we'll also, so this autumn is going to be like travel crazy for us. Um, like on Saturday, I felt like I was a travel agent booking trains and hotels and plane flights and all kinds of stuff. So we'll, we will keep you updated as time goes on because we have this trip next week. We have a trip in October. We have two trips in November uh, and probably a trip in December. So, um, Wait, we're in December. For Christmas. We haven't finalized that yet. Oh. So, yeah. So we'll Autumn be... and winter is very busy for us. It is. But... The end of every year. So we will still be recording, but there, it, there may be like we, you know, we'll it'll go live a day later than normal or it'll go live a day earlier or whatever. So we're going to make it work. So just stay updated, stay tuned. We will update you as the weeks go on. Mm -hmm. So next week, Friday the 23rd instead of Thursday. All right. I think that is all the announcements other than our normal stuff. 
um, let's tell them how they can support the podcast. So a great way is through Patreon, which is a site where you pledge an amount each month to the podcast. Um, you can also pledge for other creative people like artists and singers and musicians and all kinds of stuff. Um, and you get a reward based on the level you donate at. Uh, and that is being used to pay for technology to help us continue to podcast as you're looking ahead to university. Mm -hmm. um, so if you'd like to do that, you can go to patreon.com slash knit. All the details are there. Uh, what about the next thing? If you'd like to make a one-time donation, there is a PayPal button in our sidebar on our website. And also on our website, you will find links to amazon.com and .co.uk where you can click through and um, do your shopping as normal and Amazon gives us a little money back based on what you buy. We don't know who's buying what or anything and it doesn't cost you anything extra. Um, and we use that money primarily to pay for postage to ship out prizes because I did that last week and that was a lot. So thank you to those of you who are shopping on Amazon. So Dami, where can they find out more about these things um, and where can they find us online? You can go to geekygirlsknit.com, and there there are links to everywhere else we are online. YouTube, iTunes, Ravelry, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, etc. That's right. So with that, we're going to tell you goodbye. We hope you have a lovely, lovely rest of your week, and we will see you next Friday. Happy knitting. Bye. Bye. I have an idea. Oh, okay. I was waiting for you to say, what's your idea? What's your idea? So, so you know, when you go take the SAT, we can have not only jazz hands, but we can, like, have a song and we can sing and celebrate you. No. Like, previously on, Dammy's getting ready for her SAT test. It's, it's, that's like when Lorelai wanted to go with Rory to the AT test. I know, but I want to support you and cheer you on and jazz hands. That will be distracting, though. But if I do it before you go in for the test? You won't want to be up that early. If it is to support you, I will get up that early. And then you will come back home and go back to sleep. That's right, and I'll require gallons of coffee. I might have to have a coffee IV. Jazz hands, go, Dammy!